Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the review of League 1 and the Eredivisie 2. Uh, <laughs> two competitions where I praised two teams last time around very much and they kind of came unstuck. Of course, the first and foremost is PSV, who had this great run of scoring four, then five, then six, and seven. Of course, the next time they went out they and they actually faced for the first time a real opponent, they lost and also kind of showed a little bit a Euro, Euro European form where uh, it definitely looks like they have come unstuck a little bit. And even this weekend, it was not all that uh, great. And so it is, I'm wearing Ajax. Ajax uh, had also their first real test of the season and they just rolled over Heron Vane, which up until the point have been really, really good. But Ajax are just in a level, in a league of their own, honestly. And it is, uh, it was quite impressive. But to, to the point where I have, I have to say once, once it was 4-0, I just um, moved on. Will Heron, uh, will not Heron, Vane, Feyenoord uh, keep, keep up? I mean, they are so and so, but I, uh, their midweek showing against Lazio also showed me that there's a little bit um, too much missing. And But, you know, we'll know a lot more about this in an upcoming round that will actually be quite tasty, gotta say, as well. In France, I thought that Leon can keep up finally uh, because they have been a little bit uh, disappointment. Monaco came back from a really bad start. I think Monaco moving up, uh, but Lyon going the other way. I mean, they were also looking really, really good. And suddenly it just doesn't look good anymore. And so uh, Lyon have now been falling off. However, it is Marseille who keep up with uh, PSG. They have the exact same record in terms of points, not in terms of goals, but they look like they might be a real challenger or at least uh, that they will uh, back up a second place finish that they had last season uh, and coach Tudor with all the negative um, energy coming into the season actually turning the fan base around and getting the, them behind uh, him and let's see if Marseille I mean Marseille is always a powder keg that can explode in all kinds of uh, directions so uh, nothing's for sure when but you know, we'll we'll see. As for PSG, you know, um, nothing really fancy in those past two weeks. I think the best display was definitely against Juventus in the Champions League. Uh, but it's still, I think, I have not lauded him enough this time around. It's Neymar who actually looks to be the best player of the PSG team. Um, who always he either comes up as a scorer or as an assist uh, giver. However, it's Messi who has a completely new role. We are so used to Messi scoring goal after the goal. He's the assist king in all of Europe at, at the moment. This is very much on look. It's a very different Messi than what we've seen, but still a very much a brilliant one. So okay, enough of the preamble. Uh, let's jump right in. I owe you the last result on the first slide from round three, which was a makeup game with AZ only a 1-1, one, one, uh, even having to come back from a 1-0 deficit to a uh, 9 making, which I did not expect. I actually thought that AZ is a stable enough team. Seemingly not. Then, this is the weekend, first weekend of September. First one we see Ajax, of course, rolling over their opponent. Uh, this time Steven Bergwijn scoring two in the first half and then uh, Rensch and Kudus adding two more. And whenever you see Ajax play, there's so much joy and fun and uh, really great attacking play that it's Really, um, I understand if you're a fan from the Netherlands, uh, from another team, you cannot, I can totally see why you wouldn't like Ajax, but for a neutral watching Ajax, it's just a joy. Absolutely. Uh, this is a great team again, one that I did not expect. However, the big one came a little bit later with Twente playing against PSV. And the first half, it was all 20 with Václav Czerny scoring two goals uh, in quick succession, 17th and 24th. Uh, Putting PSV into a hole, and again, I cannot overstate this, this was a PSV team that was flying. They put one back through hill, they had chances and lots of pressure, but uh, 20 actually hung on, had even a chance to make it 3-1. So that was a big stumbling block for PSV right there, because it seemed like maybe, especially when you look at the Super Cup, or uh, the Johan Cruyff Schal, Schal, I guess, that they may be keeping up with Ajax, but the problem for PSV is always they have to play Champions League qualification. So they need to be at a much higher fitness level early in, in the season where Ajax, we already qualified for the Champions League. That makes actually a huge dif 
di difference. So the pendulum, I, I remember when Ajax had this great run in 1819, uh, they were neck to neck with PSV. They just uh, were uh, better with their draw that they got in the Champions League, then had the deep run. Yes, that was very impressive with loads of talent. But from there, it really swung because PSV since hasn't been in the Champions League. And I argue the last two times they probably should have been. Uh, Feral also getting a rather a massive win, but they did was PSV couldn't. They were 2 0 down, but uh, within 13 minutes. But they pulled it back uh, at halftime. It was 2 2. Then they take a 4 4 lead only overtime. It is 3 4. The Eredivisie extremely goal filled this time around. Uh, well over three goals. I mean, you see already Utrecht 4 3 over Sittard. Um, there at Z uh, bouncing back with a 3 0 over Emmen, but that was expected. And you know, first signs that um, um, Herren Vane may hitting a little bit of a wall is when they played only 0 0 against uh, Nijmegen. Vitesse getting a win at Groningen. Uh, just point pointing out because I always had, had my eyes on Vitesse because they have been so uh, pulse popular over the past two years. Coming uh, into uh, the this past weekend. Um, it's again, I was actually looking forward to Ajax against Herrenveen because I really thought, uh, given how Herrenveen have been doing, that this might actually be a test for Ajax. No, it was not. It was absolutely not. After four minutes, Klaas not ahead. He made it 1-0. Taylor made it 2-0. And whatever Ajax did in the second half was just... I mean, the worst degree of showboating, if, if you want. Scoring one more beautiful goal than, than the other, really having the time and the space to, to do so. Cool is getting to probably adding a fifth that I didn't even see anymore. I think in my short, I said they won 4 or 4 nil. At that moment, you know, I usually like to watch games that, where there is intensity and, and that are competitive. Uh, as much fun as it is to watch Ajax, at a certain point, it gets a little bit much and I moved on. PSV got a win against Valwijk, a uh, bounce back win, but if you look at the, it is a 95th minute penalty by Gakpo. After 1-1 one, one against Bodo, and now they're next playing Arsenal, who actually had the weekend off. Although this might actually have helped, uh, might help PSV, because, you know, our Arsenal was kind of gelling. So, yeah, um, I'm a teeny bit worried about our Arsenal there. Um, at that 1-1 one, one against Twente, that seems to be like... Uh, the duel to me between the, um, you know, behind the top three, who is the next one? Uh, is it AZ or Twente? The 1-1 one, one, uh, doesn't tell us much in that direction. Feyenoord you know, win, of course, the derby. Getting the first goal early to Cocteau or already in the dealers on Jimenez very late, uh, late on. Making it a proper score. And this Rotterdam derby, I have, have to say, is probably one of the more one-sided ones uh, in all of Europe. So I never really, I never really even recognize it at this time as a proper derby, to be honest. Um, here are the standings. Ajax ahead of Feyenoord and then PSV and that's it uh, behind. Still rather tight on top. As I said, there are five teams now that are a little bit detached from the rest. But I honestly have to say, um, it seems to be very, very much Ajax's league to lose. And you see it in the percentages already. Uh, and if, if you see the bars between expected and projected uh, based on the rate, uh, rating, it's Ajax and Feyenoord that are ahead. It's 20. And it's also Excelsior who actually do quite, quite well. Neg negative, I mean, it has to be said, Vitesse is a disappointment. And I wouldn't be surprised if the coach will be uh, going out relatively soon. Uh, and the expected final standings, yeah, Ajax. Ajax, 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 then PSV, then Feyenoord, and let's see uh, if it will really this, uh, be this way, because next weekend we have actually a really interesting uh, round of matches. Look at the bottom three. That's, to me, uh, where it's all about. Herrenveen against Twente, is maybe Twente can uh, establish themselves top five, then PSV against Feyenoord is more or less a um, who will go into the Champions League qual qualification. And maybe AZ can give Ajax a little bit more counter, especially away uh, away from home. Maybe there is some something. So I think those are really, really interesting matches to the point where I'm actually thinking of um, really may make another review video because these, these will be ones where I definitely will have my eye on. Um, after the international break, it's not as uh, high level in a way, but I give you the matches here too. Twenty Vitesse should be one, but you know, Vitesse not doing well. 
going over to France and again this was ahead of the Champions League so it's basically the first three are the most individual Marseille getting a win at Auxerre and at this point even taking top of the, of, of the, the table with uh, Gerson and Alexis Sanchez um, scoring the goals and I have I have to say this Alexis Sanchez I could I mean Milik went to you where I think Alexis Sanchez might actually make up what, what, what Milik was, to, what was doing and if someone can actually harness the power of Gwendouzi in a proper way, it might actually work. Um, Lyon then, 5 0 over and I always said that Lyon could look actually quite well. I mean, if you have Toko Kambi, Lacazette, uh, Lukeba up front, and also Dembele, this is a pretty impressive team going forward. And when they click, they can destroy a 5 0. Same thing can be said for PSG, who actually left Neymar on, on the bench. Well, that doesn't really matter. Mbappe and Messi combine already for the first goal. Uh, then Fabio gets sent off for a serious foul. Um, yeah, it was not that serious, <laughs> to be honest. But I could see why it's a red card. Given at that point, the game was more or less gone. Maybe Tinia had to come off. Uh, and Renato Sanchez came on for, for, for him and then uh, Messi assists Mbappe a second time and Mendes makes a third, third, third goal but as soon as Nantes went down to 10 men there was only one winner there uh, Lille trying to find some form as well 3-1 uh, over more Payet uh, the other was, was a lot of draws and not so many many goals uh, the big game between Nice and Monaco was decided by Braille Embolo who seems to be a good, good sign Mon Mon Monaco actually got a lot of uh, players from the German Bundesliga and also from the um, Red Bull school at that moment there, there are quite some that I rec recognize from uh, former Salzburg players then the big one, uh, Lyon losing to Lorient in the makeup game. Uh, you know, the one where the pitch was unsafe because of a festival that caused also tons of uh, bad ill will between the two teams. Well, Lorient made sure that they show uh, Lyon that, you know, they are not European level at the moment because, you know, the European fixtures, Lyon didn't play in Europe, so they could make the makeup game there. 3-1. Um, uh, it's... It's embarrassing and it didn't improve Leon's performance on the weekend. But before that, um, PSG, it was actually hard work. Harder work against Brest than they would have expected, probably. I mean, yes, complete bomb to dominance and the way uh, Messi says, this is a name for the first goal, is the, the, the typical PSG goal at, at this point. There's like a, a chip to a scooped pass over the defense. Neymar takes it, makes it 1 0, or Mbappe makes it. Uh, it's actually really pretty to watch. However, uh, then they let it a little bit slide. You know, they have big uh, Champions League games ahead. Um, and despite all their um, dominance, they give up a penalty. However, Dona Roma saves that one. And so PSG in the end hang on to a 1 0 win. Uh, as of the af afternoon games yesterday, um, I think the 3 2 win of Lorient over Nantes is remarkable because uh, Lorient two wins in a week. Uh, kind of, and you will see they moving quite up the table this way. Toulouse promoted team 1 0 over Reims. Rennes uh, also uh, making a little bit of a statement. I mean, yes, it's all, all promoted 5 5 0, and then Monaco against. Um, Oh, I forgot about uh, Marseille against Lille. That we have to talk first <laughs> before we talk more Monaco Leo. Sorry, I really want to actually want to make this uh, video much much about Marseille. There was actually actually entertaining game at a great atmosphere uh, where Lille took took to, to, to an early lead, and I have to say I really liked the Lille jerseys. And uh, despite Marseille maybe a little bit too dark blue, but uh, I know this is a traditional color. Uh, there's something about it um, that this was a very nice jersey matchup all overall. Alexis Sanchez after a nice attack by Under gives Marseille an equalizer. And at that moment on, I, I always felt it's only Marseille that can win this one to get the uh, winner through Gigo in the 61st minute. As I said, Marseille keeping up with PSG at this moment in, in, in the league. That will be a wonderful match matchup when the, the two of them meet, as long as tempers stay at the normal temperature. And now we go to Monaco against Lyon. Uh, first half, not much I can talk about, to be honest. Uh, but second half, it was uh, headers that uh, got Lyon on, on done with uh, first Badia Gilles, uh, and then uh, Maripan scoring headers after Enrique. Um, Crosses in, 63rd minute, 
it looked like Monaco are cruising and they had largely uh, Monaco under control. However, in the last 10 minutes, Tok Tok Ekambi gets a goal back, like I said, had, had a chance. But in the end, Monaco hang on and boost their chances. And Lyon, already, uh, their good start is already undone in, in, in a way and they need to dig deep. Um, if we see now the standings, I said PSG, Marseille, then has lost and Lorient, Lyon already been and Monaco catching up with Lyon. So uh, Mo Monaco, Rennes, Lille, uh, I think are in there. Clermont Foot also a relatively cool, cool performance. I mean, I look at the bottom teams. There are a few teams in there I didn't expect necessarily, like Strasbourg. I mean, Nantes is also in there. Nice is not far up. Uh, rather in interesting. Uh, of course, also interesting are the bars. Lorient clearly outperforming there. Uh, expectations, whereas on the other side, Strasbourg is definitely one of the negative uh, um, teams so far this season. But there's also remarkably many teams that are kind of on track, which is also very in 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 interesting. Uh, not too many changes in the expected standings. I mean, at the moment, it's Rennes uh, that is in the fifth spot. The first four still look rather stable, although I'm always worried a bit about Lyon, I must say. Uh, and then upcoming games, we have Lyon against PSG. This is honestly a must win for Lyon. You need to hold um, PSG. And then we also have Marseille against Rennes. That seems to be a big one to, um, you know, could be a test for Marseille. I really think so. Uh, but, you know, we got to see where it's going. And again, after break, I'm, I'm pla I, at, at this moment, I really would like to do a video next week as well. But just in case I don't, here is the round also after the international break. Uh, PSG against Nice. That was an interesting game last season around. Lance against Lyon. I mean, uh, the fixtures for Lyon don't get easier. Lance is actually having a really good start to the season as well. So yeah, that was it from me from kind of middle Europe in a, in, in a way two leagues that I actually I do like and enjoy and uh, I but I have to make an effort to watch because there are you know Serie A and the Premier League and even the Bundesliga at the time loom large but you know when I do I usually enjoy watching these two leagues uh, they are really fun uh, there and with probably two of the most entertaining teams in Ajax and PSG as well in any case please add something if you have to add something below because you know I may have missed a story. Uh, this is just my observations. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.